the investigation and management of the small for gestational age fetus. Green Top Guideline Number 31 Second edition, February 2013 Minor Revisions, January 2014 Definitions Small for gestational age, or SGA, refers to an infant born with a birth weight less than the 10th centile. Small for gestational age birth is defined as an estimated fetal weight or abdominal circumference less than the 10th centile and severe small for gestational age as an estimated fetal weight or abdominal circumference less than the 3rd centile. Growth-restricted fetuses or infants are small for gestational age while 50 to 70 percent of small for gestational age fetuses are constitutionally small with fetal growth appropriate for maternal size and ethnicity. The likelihood of fetal growth restriction is higher in severe small for gestational age infants. Growth restriction implies a pathological restriction of the genetic growth potential. As a result, growth restricted fetuses may manifest evidence of fetal compromise, such as abnormal Doppler studies, and reduce a liquor volume. Low birth weight refers to an infant with a birth weight less than 2,500 grams. Background Small fetuses are divided into normal or constitutionally small, non placenta mediated growth restriction, for example, structural or chromosomal anomaly, inborn errors of metabolism, and fetal infection and placenta-mediated growth restriction. Maternal factors can affect placental transfer of nutrients, for example, low pre-pregnancy weight, undernutrition, substance abuse, or severe anemia. Medical conditions can affect placental implantation and vasculature and hence transfer, for example, preeclampsia, autoimmune disease, thrombophilias, renal disease, diabetes, and essential hypertension. Diagnosis of a small for gestational age fetus usually relies on ultrasound measurement of fetal abdominal circumference or estimation of fetal weight. What are the risk factors for a small for gestational age fetus or neonate? What is the optimum method of screening for the small for gestational age fetus or neonate and care of at risk pregnancies? History All women should be assessed at booking for risk factors for a small for gestational age fetus or neonate to identify those who require increased surveillance. Women who have a major risk factor or an odds ratio of greater than 2.0 should be referred for serial ultrasound measurement of fetal size and assessment of well-being with umbilical artery Doppler from 26 to 28 weeks of pregnancy. Women who have three or more minor risk factors should be referred for uterine artery Doppler at 20 to 24 weeks of gestation. Minor risk factors are as follows. Maternal age greater than or equal to 35 years, IVF singleton pregnancy, naliparity, BMI of less than 20, BMI of 25 to 34.9, smoker, 1 to 10 cigarettes per day, low fruit intake pre-pregnancy, Caffeine intake of greater than or equal to 300 mg per day in the third trimester, previous preeclampsia, pregnancy interval less than 6 months, and pregnancy interval greater than or equal to 60 months. Major risk factors are as follows. Maternal age greater than 40 years, smoker greater than or equal to 11 cigarettes per day, Paternal SGA, cocaine, daily vigorous exercise, 
previous SGA baby, previous stillbirth, maternal SGA, chronic hypertension, diabetes with vascular disease, renal impairment, antiposphalipid syndrome, heavy bleeding similar to menses, and pregnancy-associated plasma protein A of less than 0.4 multiple of the median. Biochemical markers used for Down syndrome screening. Second trimester Down syndrome markers have limited predictive accuracy for delivery of a small for gestational age neonate. A low level or equivalent to less than 0.415 multiple of the median of the first trimester marker, pregnancy-associated plasma protein A should be considered a major risk factor for delivery of a small for gestational age neonate. Uterine artery doppler. In high-risk populations, uterine artery doppler at 20 to 24 weeks of pregnancy has a moderate predictive value for a severely small for gestational age neonate. In women with an abnormal uterine artery doppler at 20 to 24 weeks of pregnancy, subsequent normalization of flow velocity indices is still associated with an increased risk of a small for gestational age neonate. Repeating uterine artery doppler is therefore of limited value. Women with an abnormal uterine artery doppler at 20 to 24 weeks Define as a pulsatility index of greater than 95 percent centile and or notching should be referred for serial ultrasound measurement of fetal size and assessment of well-being with umbilical artery doppler commencing at 26 to 28 weeks of pregnancy. Women with a normal uterine artery doppler do not require serial measurement of fetal size and serial assessment of well-being with umbilical artery doppler unless they develop specific pregnancy complications, for example, antepartum hemorrhage or hypertension. However, they should be offered a scan for fetal size and umbilical artery doppler during the third trimester. Small for gestational age birth, particularly when severe, or a birth weight of less than 3rd centile, or necessitating delivery of less than 36 weeks of gestation, is characterized by failure of tropoblast invasion of the myometrial uterine spiral arteries and reduced uteroplacental blood flow. Persistent notching or abnormal flow velocity ratios after 24 weeks of gestation are associated with inadequate tropoblast invasion of the myometrial spiral arteries. However, reduced endovascular tropoblast invasion of decidual spiral arteries has been associated with the same waveform abnormalities as early as 10 to 14 weeks of pregnancy. Fetal echogenic bowel, serial ultrasound measurement of fetal size, and assessment of well-being with umbilical artery doppler should be offered in cases of fetal echogenic bowel. Fetal echogenic bowel has been shown to be independently associated with a small for gestational age neonate and fetal demise. Serial measurements of fetal size and umbilical artery doppler is indicated following confirmation of echogenic bowel. Risk should be assessed at booking and then reassessed at 20 to 24 weeks. Clinical examination. Abdominal palpation has limited accuracy for the prediction of a small for gestational age neonate and thus should not be routinely performed in this context. Serial measurement of symphysis fundal height or SFH is recommended at each antenatal appointment from 24 weeks of pregnancy, as this improves prediction of a SGA neonate. SFH should be plotted on a customized chart rather than a population-based chart, as this may improve prediction of a SGA neonate. Women with a single SFH 
which plots below the 10th centile, or serial measurements, which demonstrate slow or static growth by crossing centiles, should be referred for ultrasound measurement of fetal size. Women in whom measurement of SFH is inaccurate, for example, BMI greater than 35, large fibroids, hydramnios, should be referred for serial assessment of fetal size using ultrasound. Symphysis fundal height should be measured from the fundus, variable point, to the symphysis pubis, fixed point, with the centimeter values hidden from the examiner. Measurements should be plotted on a customized centile chart. A customized symphysis fundal height chart is adjusted for maternal characteristics, maternal height, weight, parity, and ethnic group. Calculation of customized centiles requires computer software that can be downloaded from the internet. Women with a single SFH, which plots below the 10th centile or serial measurements, which demonstrates low or static growth, for example, they cross centiles in a downward direction, should be referred for further investigation. There is no evidence to determine the number of centiles to be crossed to prompt referral. What is the optimal method of diagnosing a small for gestational age fetus and fetal growth restriction, fetal abdominal circumference or estimated fetal weight less than the 10th centile can be used to diagnose a small for gestational age fetus. Use of a customized fetal weight reference may improve prediction of a small for gestational age neonate and adverse perinatal outcome. In women having serial assessment of fetal size, use of a customized fetal weight reference may improve the prediction of normal perinatal outcome. Routine measurement of fetal abdominal circumference or estimated fetal weight in the third trimester does not reduce the incidence of a small for gestational age neonate nor does it improve perinatal outcome. Routine fetal biometry is thus not justified. Change in abdominal circumference or estimated fetal weight may improve the prediction of wasting at birth or neonatal morphometric indicators and adverse perinatal outcome suggestive of fetal growth restriction. When using two measurements of abdominal circumference or estimated fetal weight to estimate growth velocity, they should be at least three weeks apart to minimize false positive rates for diagnosing fetal growth restriction. More frequent measurements of fetal size may be appropriate where birth weight prediction is relevant outside of the context of diagnosing small for gestational age or fetal growth restriction. Where the fetal abdominal circumference or estimated fetal weight is less than 10 centile, or there is evidence of reduced growth velocity, women should be offered serial assessment of fetal size and umbilical artery doppler. Biophysical test. Biophysical tests, including amniotic fluid volume, cardiotocography or CTG, and biophysical scoring are poor at diagnosing a small or growth-restricted fetus. What investigations are indicated in small for gestational age fetuses? Offer a referral for a detailed fetal anatomical survey and uterine R3 Doppler by a fetal medicine specialist if severe small for gestational age is identified at the 18 to 20 weeks scan. Cardiotyping should be offered in severely small for gestational age fetuses with structural anomalies and in those detected before 23 weeks of gestation, especially if uterine artery doppler is normal. Serological screening for congenital cytomegalovirus or CMV and toxoplasmosis infection should be offered in severe small for gestational age. Testing for syphilis and malaria should be considered in high-risk populations.
Eutherine artery Doppler has limited accuracy to predict adverse outcome in small for gestational age fetuses diagnosed during the third trimester. In severe small for gestational age, the incidence of chromosomal abnormalities has been reported to be as high as 19%. Triploidy was the most common chromosomal defect in fetuses referred before 26 weeks of gestation and trisomy 18 in those referred thereafter. Fetal infections are responsible for up to 5% of small for gestational age fetuses. The most common pathogens are reported to be cytomegalovirus, toxoplasmosis, malaria, and syphilis. Malaria is a significant cause of preterm birth and low birth weight worldwide, and it should be considered in those from or who have traveled in endemic areas. What interventions should be considered in the prevention of small for gestational age fetuses or neonates? Antiplatelet agents may be effective in preventing small for gestational age birth in women at high risk of preeclampsia, although the effect size is small. In women at high risk of preeclampsia, antiplatelet agents should be commenced at or before 16 weeks of pregnancy. There is no consistent evidence that dietary modification, progesterone, or calcium prevent birth of a small for gestational age infant. These interventions should not be used for this indication. Interventions to promote smoking cessation may prevent delivery of a small for gestational age infant. The health benefits of smoking cessation indicate that these interventions should be offered to all women who are pregnant and smoke. Antithrombotic therapy appears to be a promising therapy for preventing delivery of a small for gestational age infant in high-risk women. However, there is insufficient evidence, especially concerning serious adverse effects, to recommend its use. Smoking increases the risk of small for gestational age. Women who are able to stop smoking by 15 weeks of gestation can reduce the risk back to that of non-smokers. Oral beta blockers was associated with an increased risk of small for gestational age neonate. Use of atenolol is therefore best avoided, but no recommendation can be made regarding the best agent or target blood pressure to optimize fetal growth, especially when the fetus is known to be small for gestational age. What interventions should be considered in the preterm small for gestational age fetus? Women with a small for gestational age fetus between 24 plus 0 and 35 plus 6 weeks of gestation, where delivery is being considered, should receive a single course of antenatal corticosteroids to accelerate fetal lung maturation and reduce neonatal death and morbidity. A proportion of growth-restricted fetuses will be delivered prematurely and consequently be at an increased risk of developing cerebral palsy. Maternally administered magnesium sulfate has a neuroprotective effect and reduces the incidence of cerebral palsy amongst preterm infants. Australian guidelines recommend the administration of magnesium sulfate when delivery is before 30 weeks of gestation. What is the optimal method and frequency of fetal surveillance in a small for gestational age infant? And what is or what are the optimal test or tests to time delivery? Umbilical artery Doppler. In a high risk population, the use of umbilical artery Doppler has been shown to reduce perinatal morbidity and mortality. Umbilical artery Doppler should be the primary surveillance tool in the small for gestational age fetus. When umbilical artery Doppler flow indices are normal, it is reasonable to repeat surveillance every 14 days. More frequent Doppler surveillance may be appropriate in a severely small for gestational age fetus.
When umbilical or three Doppler flow indices are abnormal, pulsatility or resistance index of greater than plus two SDs above mean for gestational age, and delivery is not indicated, repeat surveillance twice weekly in fetuses with end diastolic velocities present, and daily in fetuses with absent reverse end diastolic frequencies. Cardiotechography or CTG. Cardiotechography should not be used as the only form of surveillance in small for gestational age fetuses. Interpretation of the cardiotechography should be based on short term fetal heart rate variation from computerized analysis. Amniotic fluid volume. Ultrasound assessment of amniotic fluid volume should not be used as the only form of surveillance in small for gestational age fetuses. Interpretation of amniotic fluid volume should be based on single deepest vertical packet. The incidence of an amniotic fluid index of less than or equal to 5 cm in a low-risk population is 1.5%. Biophysical profile or BPP Biophysical profile should not be used for fetal surveillance in preterm small for gestational age fetuses. The biophysical profile or BPP includes four acute fetal variables, which includes breathing movement, gross body movement, tone and cardiotechography, and amniotic fluid volume. Each assign a score of two if normal or zero if abnormal. Reducing biophysical profile score is associated with lower antepartum umbilical venous pH and increasing perinatal mortality. Middle cerebral artery or MCA Doppler. In the preterm small for gestational age fetus, middle cerebral artery or MCA Doppler has limited accuracy to predict acidemia and adverse outcome and should not be used to time delivery. In the term small for gestational age fetus with normal umbilical artery Doppler, an abnormal middle cerebral artery Doppler of pulsatility index of less than 5th centile has moderate predictive value for acidosis at birth and should be used to time delivery. Cerebral vasodilatation is a manifestation of the increase in diastolic flow, a sign of the brain sparing effect of chronic hypoxia, and results in decrease in Doppler indices of the middle cerebral artery or MCA, such as the pulsatility index, reduced middle cerebral artery pulsatility index, or MCA PI or umbilical artery pulsatility index is therefore an early sign of fetal hypoxia in small for gestational age fetuses. Middle cerebral artery Doppler may be a more useful test in small for gestational age fetuses detected after 32 weeks of gestation where umbilical artery Doppler is typically normal. Based on this evidence, it is reasonable to use middle cerebral artery Doppler to time delivery in the term small for gestational age fetus with normal umbilical artery Doppler, ductus venosus or DV, and umbilical vein or UV Doppler. Ductus venosus Doppler has moderate predictive value for acidemia and adverse outcome. Ductus venosus Doppler should be used for surveillance in the preterm small for gestational age fetus with abnormal umbilical artery Doppler and used to time delivery. The ductus venosus or DV Doppler flow velocity pattern reflects atrial pressure volume changes during the cardiac cycle. A retrograde A wave and pulsatile flow in the umbilical vein or UV signifies the onset of overt fetal cardiac compromise. What is the optimal gestation to deliver the small for gestational age fetus? In the preterm small for gestational age fetus with umbilical artery, 
absent or reverse end diastolic velocity detected prior to 32 weeks of gestation. Delivery is recommended when ductus venosus doppler becomes abnormal or umbilical vein pulsations appear, provided the fetus is considered viable and after completion of steroids. Even when venous doppler is normal, delivery is recommended by 32 weeks of gestation and should be considered between 30 to 32 weeks of gestation. If middle cerebral artery doppler is abnormal, delivery should be recommended no later than 37 weeks of gestation. In the small for gestational age fetus, detected after 32 weeks of gestation, with an abnormal umbilical artery doppler, delivery no later than 37 weeks of gestation is recommended. In the small for gestational age fetus detected after 32 weeks of gestation with normal umbilical artery doppler, a senior obstetrician should be involved in determining the timing and mode of birth of these pregnancies. Delivery should be offered at 37 weeks of gestation. At present, there is no effective intervention to alter the course of fetal growth restriction except delivery. Timing delivery is therefore a critical issue in order to balance the risk of prematurity against those of continued intrauterine stay, death and organ damage due to inadequate tissue perfusion. Given the mortality associated with umbilical artery absence or reverse end diastolic velocity alone, delivery should be considered based on this finding alone after 30 weeks of gestation and recommended no later than 32 weeks of gestation. How should the small for gestational age fetus be delivered? In the small for gestational age fetus with umbilical artery absent or reverse end diastolic velocity, delivery by cesarean section is recommended. In the small for gestational age fetus with normal umbilical artery doppler or with abnormal umbilical artery pulsatility index, but end diastolic velocity is present, induction of labor can be offered but rates of emergency cesarean section are increased and continuous fetal heart rate monitoring is recommended from the onset of uterine contractions. Early admission is recommended in women in a spontaneous labor with a small for gestational age fetus in order to instigate continuous fetal heart rate monitoring. Appendix number 2 Screening for small for gestational age or SGA fetus.